Live from Shadow Mirror Studios, this is the Talkie Box Podcast. Mm-mm good. Oh yeah. Mmm. Stop it. <laughs> that is so good. I'm your host Dave, and with me uh, sometimes is Jason. Sometimes Jason. And yep. Justin. Hey, sometimes. And we got Jeremy Adam back. Sometimes. What up? <laughs> Dave. Yeah. You are my constant, in that you are constantly on this show. Yes. We pretty much don't do the show if I'm not here. Pretty much, we definitely don't do the show if you're not here. Yeah. I think you should do it without him one day. I don't know if they can. <laughs> oh. Just break into my house to do the show? Oh, I could. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Just start taking shit before I leave. Hey, Dave, I'm going <laughs> to take this microphone with me to practice some stuff. Uh-huh. Grab my phone really quick. I mean, I'm gonna borrow. I'm gonna borrow your computer. Can I <laughs> borrow that real quick? Mm-hmm. I would like to do all that. these. Well, we could still film some some off-site mm-hmm. oh, yeah. shenanigans and mm-hmm. then bring them back to the audience. Shenanigans, but yeah, they're cute. not not technically talkie box shows. No. Like when you peeled your face off. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's still a talkie box show, which is not the podcast. Or like the most uh, disappointing 4th of July spectacular. <laughs> yeah, oh, that, was... that was really good. Thrillingly disappointing. Oh, we got so many views. If, guys, if you want to see some really compelling video, go check out our 4th of July spectacular. Yeah. Also, go back and look for Winter Fun. <laughs> Listen to a story by Jason. It's probably one of the most... Longest things we've ever heard. Yeah. Um, it's tedious. <laughs> it's tedious. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Jason... I was told just before the show started that you got yourself a smartphone. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it was it was donated to me. Ah, yes. It was donated to me by uh, you're a charitable case. By yeah, I am uh, a more tech savvy friend who yeah. had himself a, a better smartphone, and this was like his throwaway. Right. I like, couldn't even get credits for it, so it was just like ah. Yeah. You, ah, you so take you take this. Take my trash. Take, take my god. <laughs> they won't give me any money for it. It's trash, and now yours. <laughs> right. Now it's your trash. What, what? So what is it? Uh, it's. I think it's a six. One man's a trash six. is another yeah. man's it's first iPhone. Like an iPhone 6. iPhone yeah. 6. That yeah. helps a lot. And that iPhone one, 6. One other thing. He doesn't yeah. think it's that attractive. It's a six. <laughs> yeah, it's you know on a Out scale like one <laughs> to twenty four, it's a six. Oh, okay. But what, uh, what about a scale from one to ten? Uh, it's still a six. Okay, <laughs> one to hundred, it's it's a six. It's remains well, a six. Well, see, I think <laughs> what it is 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 Jason has this um, like he does not have an affinity for technology, so he's more than likely. I'm just speculating yeah. here. He is absolutely like chilled to the balls, scared <laughs> to figure out how to use this phone. Yeah. So he's just it's, baseline. It's, it's, so did you text me from this iPhone today? No, no. He's still using his other phone as his phone. His he's only phone. using the iPhone mm-hmm. for the the talkie game chats for apps and stuff. But I've only downloaded one app that I was instructed to download. <laughs> what is uh, it? It's called Discord. Okay. And it's basically an app for you. You can chat. It's like a multi-party chat mm-hmm. uh, for audio chat or for just text chatting. Okay. Um, but mainly set up, I'm guessing, for gaming. But it could be used for conference calling of any kind, really. Oh, okay. It's like Twitch chat. All right. Without Twitch. Hmm. So uh, you just talk to talk to your friends. So yeah, like a, a group chat kind of thing. Like you just yeah, like that, everybody. like Exodune, the LARP that we play. Yeah. There's like a, a chat box, yeah. chat box for that. Mm-hmm. Like so, people from Exodune can get together and right. chitty chat with each other and That's chitty cool. chat. And no one's ever asked me to get this thing. I'm 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 part of Exodune. Yeah, they probably don't want you listening. Jerks. What about that? Yeah. Hmm. But um, hmm. and the reason it was given that. to me was so that I could game. Mm-hmm. With this friend because he's on PC and I'm on PlayStation 4, and so you know, there wasn't an easy in between for us to chat while we were gaming. But okay. you guys can cross platform on the same game, yeah. There's many games that are cross platform for PC to PlayStation 4. That's I, didn't uh, know. I did not know that. I, I did not know that. Thanks, Johnny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there, right. it's true. So, um, so, what, so, what games are you playing? Uh, still the same games. Um, Fortnite was specifically what this was purposed for, was mm-hmm. just so that we could kind of play some, a little bit of shooter games with each other. 
Now, is that a collaborative game or is it every man for himself kind of game? Both. Is it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. There's, play there's like... squad play, duo play, single person play. Okay. Uh, but uh, and and there's a PVE part that you have to pay for, and I've talked about this before on the show, but yeah, I wasn't paying uh, attention. No. Uh, and so, but the part that I play that's free to play for everyone is mm-hmm. a hundred man battle royale. Right. Uh, so. All right. And they've actually very recently updated the map. Uh, the old map was getting pretty redundant. Same map over and over. You yeah. you approach it at different angles when you're parachuting in, mm-hmm. but still like still the same terrain. Still the same terrain. Yeah. So after your thousandth parachuting in, like you've kind of learned every nook and cranny. Right. Um, so they they kind of updated the map, added some new areas to it broadened it out a little bit. I watched him play this 100-man <clears throat> melee kind of thing, and it kind of feels like the Hunger Games almost. Yeah. Like, everybody just kind of goes in there, you grab the first weapon you can. If you're lucky, you make it. If you don't, <laughs> you're you're dead within, like, the first few people. And right. it just has, like, a little ticker that lets you know how many people are left in the map. Yeah. And they're... Now, I think you told me, I think you told us last time, the part where I was paying attention, that... You had been the first killed, but you hadn't been the the last to last survive, man right? standing. Is that, is that how it was? No, I've I've actually won twice. Oh, okay. I have two two victories under my belt hmm. from from the game, but and I've oh, never shit. been the first one to die because usually the first one to die jumps off the bus immediately, para, you know, yeah. para drops straight down, and there's like ten or fifteen people that they're all immediately fighting for weapons in the very oh, okay. first spot that comes across. I haven't even gotten off the bus at this point. Okay. Like I like to just chill, mm. sort of take my time, find a spot that only has one or two other people that are contesting it, sort of watch where they drop in, grab a weapon, sneak up on them, jack yeah. them while they're not paying attention. Okay. So okay, so what you had told me was that you there have been times where you were like you were still parachuting down and somebody shot you or something as you were dropping, was that it? Uh, yes, okay. I have been shot at plenty of times. Yeah. They can actually drop you out of the sky that okay. way. But hmm. All right. You played any good video games lately? I was just telling Jeremy earlier, I, I haven't played a console game in a month, at least. I've, I've just been busy with, like, uh, Life. testing and stuff, you know, for, for my new job and stuff like that. But I've just only been playing games on my phone a little bit. That's about it. And it's hmm. just the same games I've been playing. There's, like, a... Uh, Marvel Avengers Academy game that I play that's just a time waster. Yeah, um, I saw it. Several other Haven't things played like that. It yet. Yeah. I saw like I a it. coin dozer game. Like, yeah. Like you would play just, in the arcade. Yeah, just like these, you know, time wasty yeah. board games. Like while I'm waiting on, on you know, the some counter to tick down on this game, I'll play this other game. Oh, okay. You know, that kind of thing. I actually, uh, I've, I've been playing and actually just beat Super Mario Odyssey for the Switch. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, I, when I got the Switch a little while back, I went and picked up Mario, mm. played like through the first stage, and I'm like, oh, this is cool and everything, and then I got caught up in Breath of the Wild, mm. and I was just knee-deep in Breath of the Wild for a while, and it's a very big game, oh, yeah. so after a while, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to put this down for a second, there's still plenty to do, went back to Mario Odyssey and played through it and beat it, and I'll tell you, it is an amazing game. Cool. It is really, really good. Yeah. Um, they have... I actually just won a few awards for um, like Game Informer, like Games of the Year and stuff like that. Okay. Um, best platformer. It was one of the coolest things that they do. That I think is you know you'll go through these big giant 3D stages, and you can throw your hat on certain enemies and then become that enemy and like take on their powers for a second. But then there are other parts where you go to like a little pixelated pipe. And you go down the pipe and it takes you to like an old school... Like a 2D... Like 2D, only it's still like laying in on the 3D map. So it'll be on like the side of a giant mountain or something. And you'll pop in and you'll see your little 3D uh-huh. sprite yeah. running up and collecting coins on the side of this mountain. It's a really, really cool feature that yeah. is in almost every single stage. And uh, it was a really interesting play. Like they somehow kept it... True to Mario, mm. but still like expanded on it and built it up a lot, and gave you a ton of features to play with. Yeah, I the have, mini games are a lot of fun too. I need to get back in a Nintendo, or at least the Mario. The last Mario game I played was I think Mario sixty four. So I never played like Sunshine or Galaxy or 
I never played um, Sunshine or Galaxy. Yeah. I, I played 64. Mm. Um, I played Paper Mario and the Paper Mario follow-up on Nintendo 64. Um, and honestly, I really haven't had a Nintendo platform since the GameCube, I think. Yeah. I didn't even have that. Yeah. So. Well, it was my buddies. I'd play it all the time. Right. But the Switch, I have found to be a great investment. Oh, good. Yeah, I mean, the games that I have on it are a lot of fun. Mm. They're fun to play handheld. They're fun to play docked. Yeah. And it's it's really cool to see, like, a handheld game that you're playing. You're used to playing it on a tiny screen, and then you just, like, plop it into a little dock, mm. and now it is gorgeous and, like, 1080p on your big screen TV. Yeah. It's, it's a nice change. It's a nice change of pace, and I definitely recommend it to anybody who's looking for a fun game system. What was your total time, uh, total play time to beat the game, uh, Odyssey? Odyssey, it probably took me about 25 hours to get through just all of the main stages. But then, of course, like any Mario game, there's always a way of going back and getting more stars right. or, you know... Doing the 100% like perfection completionist, I could probably spend another 15, 20 hours doing that. So, I mean, it's it's a good 45, 50 it's, hour game. You can sink a lot of time in those games. It's you not, can sink a lot of time into it. Kind of thing. No. no. And they do have some two player features as well. Okay. Is, um, it, is there, are there, I don't know if Mario has ever done DLC, but is that something that. Um, you know, for, for this one, I haven't seen anything about DLC. I know they had like an update that added like Luigi as a character and Hello. stuff like that. Um, I know they did just come out with the DLC for Breath of the Wild, which is supposed to be phenomenal. Mm -hmm. it's supposed to have like a motorcycle and new weapons and stuff like that. Yeah, a motorcycle. Know, apparently, a motorcycle. A motorcycle that Dave, looks like a horse. That looks like a horse. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the doula <laughs> hand. Um, but no, that's also another game that I highly recommend. Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Fantastic game. Like yeah. forwards, backwards, yeah. side to side. Great game. Now, now, speaking of tech, something happened, not not tech that used to be on the show, but <laughs> technology. Uh, something happened recently that, that is both exciting and terrifying. Uh, Elon Musk is going to release a flamethrower available to the public for $500. He already has, is and already he's, sold he's sold $5 million worth of them so far. That's so amazing. <laughs> Five million dollars worth of five hundred dollar flamethrowers. I want one so bad. I think they're like six hundred dollar flamethrowers. I'm pretty they? sure they're six hundred dollar oh, flamethrowers. I don't know. I saw a point is flamethrowers, and they were six hundred. Yeah. Well, maybe someone was buying them and marking them up. Yeah, bucks. but he, <laughs> on his he's, website, they're five hundred. He, he's uh, not doing it uh, through Tesla. He's doing it through the Boring Company, um, which he also used to like he. Sold hats. A whole bunch of boring hats. That just say boring company on them. <laughs> and he sold so many of these hats. I think he made like $500,000 on these hats or something like that. Oh my God. To fund digging a tunnel for these underground super trains that he's designing. Yeah. So it's he's using the boring company to sell stuff that he finds boring. Mm-hmm. To In, fund his other project. Apparently. Including a flamethrower. Yeah. I thought it was called boring because it's tunnel boring. That might be it too. Yeah, that like, also sounds right. right. <laughs> that sounds like, <laughs> but it's, it's still accurate. boring. That he finds yeah. boring, like but, flamethrowers. He's like, <laughs> uh, where's my laser Gatling? Yeah. God damn. But tying that into video games, Jeremy, you were telling me earlier so, something about because he's like been going crazy tweeting about this. He had um, one of his tweets was something like, "But wait." There's more. This flamethrower is also sentient. It's safe where it's cryptocurrency, and it comes with a free like blockchain or something. <laughs> and the lead director for um, the Borderlands game series is like, dude, we want to put this in the next Borderlands game. <laughs> like, can we do that? You can write the flavor text and everything. He's like, yeah, sure, go for it. <laughs> so in Borderlands 3, we're going to have the sentient flamethrower. <laughs> so here it is. This is the... The Boring Company Flamethrower, yeah. retail $500 USD. And then from what I understand, it's like it's available to be sold because it only shoots out like yeah. less than 10 feet or something. Because like if it's more Which, than 10 feet, it, it's... Military? Can. Yeah. <laughs> but that's still like, that's clever. Oh yeah, like absolutely. Why wouldn't I want a flamethrower? Yeah. What do I need a flamethrower for? Irrelevant question. Yeah. Why wouldn't I want a flamethrower? You ever seen a spider? <laughs> <laughs> flamethrower. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> 
But yeah, that's a great way to but, market that. Now, like I said, but that's people amazing. People are going to want to use them. That's the problem. Oh, is yeah. that all of these that are being sold, they're being sold to people that shouldn't have them. Oh, absolutely. That, that that's what I was saying. That's the terrifying part. Is while it's awesome that you can go out and buy a flamethrower on the open market, <laughs> you can go out and buy a flamethrower <laughs> on the open market. I saw and some, so many arson cases. I saw something that said we're living in a time where young adults think it's okay to eat Tide Pods and someone is selling affordable flamethrowers on the open market. <laughs> <laughs> we, they should not be at the same time. It's so ridiculous. So, you know, I think we should take this opportunity for an advisory statement. Yeah, a little PSA. If you watch this show, please, by all means, do not eat Tide Pods. We need followers. Guys, <laughs> we can't lose you to Tide Stop Pods. Stop killing yourself by eating so. It, which, I saw something recently, it was like, we live in a time where kids are actually washing their own mouths out. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I was driving by a uh, one of those Tide dry cleaners the other day, mm. and just because of all the bullshit that's going on, I'm driving by, and I'm like, Tide restaurant? No, that's not right. <laughs> that's the- <laughs> Something's wrong here. I if I can get a reservation. <laughs> they did have a valet and a drive through <laughs> Of course they did. <laughs> oh. Uh, but I'm, I'm serious. I wonder what their top-selling appetizers are. You want to know an incredible life hack I recently discovered? Tide dumplings. You can actually use a Tide pod to clean your clothes. Oh, yeah. You can do laundry with those things. Yeah. Weird. Did you know that? I like, did. Yes. Wow. I, I actually have Tide pods in the house. <laughs> yeah? Mm-hmm. And everybody that comes in makes that joke. They're like, oh, is that for the snack on later? <laughs> Are you having a snack later? <laughs> Obviously, nope. I am. Why treat. the hell else would I have these? Now, yeah. the, the sad thing is, no one said anything about the Cascade Pods, which I've got several of those for our dishwasher. No, man. Tide has the most flavor because it has blue and orange. Mm, that's true. It's Better colors. Well, Cascade's got, I think, like green and purple. So yeah, green not good enough. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not appetizing. Mm. Those are Joker that's, colors. That's they the say veggie one, I think. Yeah, the, the, right there is definitely. It's like the Tide ones are like grape and orange. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the flavor profile they're going for. Yeah, grape and orange. Ah, uh, what a world! Yeah. What a world we live in, guys. <laughs> Coming up next on Talkie Box, watch the gang eat Tide Pods. <laughs> but I'm not, curious. That's like, not. No, no, we're not doing it. I'm curious what the oh. actual the, the limitations are on on weapons. Like so, flamethrowers are obviously. Totally fine. Totally okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ten feet so, or less. Ten feet. Totally so, like, fine. what about like shock weapons and stuff like that? Like, I mean, you can buy a taser. You can buy a taser. You can buy a BB gun. You can buy a flamethrower. What's yeah. the big whoop? They're all the same. You can buy a missile launcher. <laughs> I mean, they're plastic missiles, and it's in the toy aisle. And that's not <laughs> like one. It says GI Joe on the side. It says GI <laughs> Joe. Spring loaded, baby. <laughs> Repair yourself. But no, I, I see where you're going with that, and and I mean, how long until we have missile launchers? You know that are that are readily affordable. available and affordable and legal. Yes, <laughs> I have the right to bear flamethrowers. Apparently, in this country, yeah, a missile is just a flamethrower that explodes when it I gets wonder, right going. That does make me wonder. Like, if for whatever reason the government decides to crack down this flamethrower thing, is is a flamethrower protected on the Second Amendment? I mean, it's. Arms it's technically a firearm, so yes. I mean, it's literally a <laughs> firearm. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. I think I think you could probably get some lawyers to rally a healthy debate about the subject, mm-hmm, yeah. but, of which none of us are lawyers. So let's hear Jason's opinion. But it's just like, <laughs> all right. So you know, obviously, all right. You're not buying them for hunting, right? You know, you're not buying them for sport. You know, like no. yeah. like sport against other people. I don't know, man. They've got <laughs> vape Olympics. There's probably going to be a flamethrower Olympics now. Well, that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> but oh wait, so can like, we add this talking box Olympics? Flamethrower Olympics. <laughs> uh, I mean, the flamethrower you, You're not really buying it for like any kind of skillful target practice yeah. because it's a flamethrower, right? You set up some paper plates, you draw an X in the middle of it, and the whole plate the whole thing bursts fire. into flames. Yeah. And you're like, I got it right, oh, I got it right dead in the middle. <laughs> Ooh, did y'all see it? But Boom. think about think about things like starting a fire in your fireplace, mm-hmm. starting a bonfire, from, from your couch, cool burning party down your woods. Hey, All guys, of the things you out. shouldn't use a flamethrower <laughs> for. That's what these flamethrowers are going to be used for. Yeah, yeah. They're absolutely. not going to be used for anything. I think I think we should buy these and repackage them. Create like a package deal. Like mm. put the flamethrower on there, put the flamethrower in there, 
like a canister of gasoline. Yeah. And it's we'll just call it a fireplace starter kit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> We will have to put an advisory on there. I Actually, think. do we know what fuel it uses? I I would assume propane because it looks like a propane. Tank. Propane or butane or yeah, something like that. I mean, something mm. you can get like to replace. Right. I mean, it's got to be something somewhat readily available. All right. So um, All right. I, I actually want to read some of the, the the flavor text on this. <laughs> All right. So we got um. Five hundred dollar. The boring company flame co- guaranteed to liven up any party. World's <laughs> safest flamethrower. Oh, fire extinguisher sold separately. Parentheses for exorbitant amounts of money. Taxes and shipping will be added at checkout. Additional custom fees and the rest of it's boring. <laughs> uh, may not be used on boring company decorative lacquered hay bales or boring company dockside munitions warehouses. <laughs> Before shipping, aspiring flamethrower aficionados will be sent terms and conditions rhyme for review and acceptance. Start shipping in the spring. Okay, interesting. So, so interesting. people have already placed their orders for this, but they don't start shipping until the spring. Yes, and you can also buy the Boring Company Fire Extinguisher uh, pre-order. It's $30. Buy an overpriced Boring Company Fire Extinguisher. You can best definitely buy one for less elsewhere, but this one comes with a cool sticker, and the button is conveniently right above. All right. So there you have it, and um, it doesn't really say. Yeah, there's not much about it. It's not just... really. Whoa, calm down, cart. <laughs> I'm not buying that flamethrower yet. You want a flamethrower? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> calm down. So. And they really want me to have so this. So we don't know what fuel it uses. No. We don't know what fuel it Although uses. Although I assume it, it might use whatever fuel hooks up to that hose. Yeah, it looks it it looks like a propane canister. Oh yeah. Yeah, I assume it'll tell you because, like he said, when you like actually buy it, it'll mm-hmm. they'll send you the terms and conditions. So right. it might tell you what you're gonna need. Right. You can probably buy boring company canisters as well. Yeah, they are great at marketing. Or run amounts of money. So, but I prefer to have like a backpack canister kind of thing. Right. I mean that makes um, sense. Yeah. I I love their website. All right, it's a white page, <laughs> and underneath the uh, like you know your little tabs, you've got home, mm-hmm. FAQ, jobs, media, feedback. Hat flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. They know how to market to their audience yeah. is all I'm saying. My favorite thing about this, though, is when he was still marketing the hats, he's like, all right, once we sell this many more hats, we're moving on to flamethrowers. And everyone's like, what? Is this a joke? And he's like, all right, only 5,000 more hats, flamethrowers. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, and, and everybody thought it was a joke. I remember that, like, flamethrowers. Ha, ha, guys, ha, Elon Musk. we met the quota. Flamethrowers are coming. Yeah, okay. Flamethrower available for pre-order. Oh, my God. He did it. <laughs> oh, my he God. He did it. What will he do next? Uh, has he said? Jet has he said what happens when he sells enough flamethrowers? Listen, if they put... <laughs> if they have affordable, efficient jetpacks coming to market, <laughs> it can be two grand. I'm going to get one. Yep. And I'm going to fly everywhere. <laughs> yeah. With your flamethrower and your boring hat. Yeah. Yeah. I will be a brand representative. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be flying in. Hey, guys. <laughs> have you heard about this flamethrower? I got a nifty hat. I hear the <laughs> lightning cannons next. <laughs> Ooh, man. Mm. I feel like they should have, like, a Tesla cannon. I feel like that would make sense. Yeah. I, now, the thing I'm really worried about now is that, I mean, Elon Musk is going to become a supervillain. No, no, no. Elon uh, Musk is going to become Iron Man. If he's not already a supervillain, he's not going to become one. I mean, just because well, we haven't heard about it yet. I'm no, just saying, listen, my I, guess is if he's going to be a superhero or a supervillain, he has already he's doing come it. to terms with that part <laughs> of the decision-making <laughs> process. But that doesn't mean like, he's there yet. Like, the Iron like, Man well, suit never is really, not ready yet. You never really get... When you're that kind of a visionary with that kind of wealth and power, you yeah. never really get to that... I'm not apex. I'm, I'm not saying there's not a Mark One in his garage. <laughs> I'm just saying he's not flying till there's a Mark Three. That's all I'm saying. Mm. He's probably got one. He just walks around with you know in his house. <laughs> you see that bug? <laughs> Bam! <laughs> not anymore. I think one of the things I really like about Elon Musk is like he's he's so involved in like specific aspe- aspects of culture, and he's like he's a big video game nerd, and he. Yeah is very open about that in his tweets and his, like, follow-ups. Like, the fact that Borderlands wants mm-hmm. to... Like, I fully believe that that, is, that will end up in the next Borderlands game. Oh, yeah. and Elon oh, Musk so will happy. write the flavor text, mm-hmm. and he will be a big part of that. If it's a sentient flamethrower, he might get to voice it. I was going to say, there's a, yeah. ch- there's a... Yeah. I would say odds of him voicing a small part in it would be very likely. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
he's a hot commodity that Elon Musk. Absolutely. I did hear that uh, what they opened up the the factory in Rochester, New York. I want to say somewhere in New York that is producing the uh, the tiles, the solar tiles, the roofing tiles we oh, discussed yeah. a long time ago. Those are cool. Uh, and so they're actually being manufactured here in America now and should be able to be purchased. So for those of you who don't know what he's talking about, like something that Elon Musk came out with, I mean, it was probably a year ago now that like we actually saw the announcement, yeah. but uh, he was talking about these solar panels and he unveiled these... Uh, roof tiles, these roofing shingles that are solar panels that will charge a battery and will yeah. power your home. And they're supposed to be like weather resistant. They look just like regular uh, roof, roof shingles. Shop, yeah. It's They're really, really cool. And apparently they're supposed to be very affordable as well. So mm -hmm. we'll see how that turns out. It doesn't mean it's not going to cost you several thousands of dollars to right, redo your I mean, roof. But in the long probably, term, it'll be... Better. As yeah. it becomes more affordable and becomes built into certain housings, mm -hmm. like that's when it'll become affordable and you'll start seeing it go mainstream. And you'll you'll probably never actually completely offset power usage. So you know it, you'll just you'll be able to reduce your I mean, power usage. There's some people who have bad. done that. Like there there's been people where they they produce their own power to the point where they the sell power, it back. Yeah, to they're the city. selling the power back to the, the power companies. So. Yeah, but those people are are being very thorough and specifically mindful of generating power oh, yeah. where they have like the solar panels that actually follow the sun mm -hmm. those little flower as, solar panels that kind of yeah those things are cool yeah you know. yeah and and you know if you're like a a robotics guy from georgia tech or something like that like sure you've got that in your backyard and right. you, you get 12 dollars a month from generating <laughs> enough power to, to you know but maintain. also you know a hundred dollars less uh, power bill that you wouldn't have yeah. otherwise. And you're probably real fun at parties, and yep. you might have a freezer full of heads. There's no telling. <laughs> you but know who else is real fun at parties? No. Anyone who gets that flamethrower. That's right. <laughs> right? Oh, Set yeah. it right there on the website. Oh, it is going to Liven be... Liven up any party. There's going to be so many, when it releases, like the flood <laughs> on YouTube yeah. of videos of people setting oh, things yeah. on fire. All right, Just, so do we want to go ahead and pool the money now and <laughs> pre-order? Because we can set some shit on fire and put it on the internet. Yeah. Maybe we should. I think that's <laughs> well within our realm of capabilities. I mean, we could do that without... How quickly power. can I burn down this <laughs> deck? <laughs> well, you know, like the small YouTube channel. Just got the new boring flamethrower. Just got third degree burns. <laughs> Two videos, like a day of <laughs> I'm in the hospital. Let's see how buddy. quickly this will melt. Now I'm in jail. <laughs> we yeah. gotta try and melt Next out of these handcuffs. Like several several months later, why they deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's all gonna be fun and games because, you know, adults we give each other a certain amount of leniency to be dumb and learn from it or die from it. You yeah. know? but it's the first time that some fucking kid goes and grabs their their dumbass uncle's flamethrower and <laughs> takes it to a school cafeteria and like one kid gets burnt and now congress is yeah. you know well, fucking phones are ringing off the hook and shit i don't think you were listening to me earlier <laughs> guaranteed to liven up any party world's safest flamethrower it does say that right there. it I says mean, it right there it's the safest flamethrower that's because all other flamethrowers are specifically Safe. designed to kill people it See, it says it right yeah. there guaranteed Safe. to light up any party is world's safest flamethrower right it, it says it because every other predecessor flamethrower was specifically designed yeah. with war in mind right so this, this is, is a party <laughs> flamethrower this is a war on boredom which it's is a like war yeah. on boredom which is kind of like those little pull string poppers that you get at new year's eve yeah. except like everybody's <laughs> eyebrows <laughs> except, are except everybody's on fire right yeah <laughs> there's people like screaming <laughs> the curtains are definitely gone yeah yeah I, Arson trick cases really will be really easy these, to trace, though. These YouTube videos. I mean, remember when the hoverboard came out? <laughs> just that became a huge deal, and some of them were on fire. Yes. Um, the best part about those but hoverboards. Then, but so, so what's going to happen now is people are going to get these flamethrowers, and mm -hmm. there's going to be knockoff flamethrowers, which cannot be claimed oh. as the world's safest flamethrowers. And those are going to explode, 
and then we're going to see those YouTube videos, and we're going to laugh and laugh. Mm. Hashtag knockoff flamethrower. <laughs> but, yeah, those the same kids that live through the, the Tide Pod eating or whatever, like, <laughs> they're going to get a hold of a flamethrower, and they're going to have some kind of a flamethrower battle. Or but is that bad if they survive the Tide Pods because they weren't stupid enough to do the Tide Pod challenge. I'm just worried that they're going to keep surviving and push <laughs> the evolution of stupid. Because I mean, like anyone true. who does the Tide Pod and, you know, doesn't make it, then they're already getting rid of the bad genes. Yeah. They're cleaning out, out the, of gene, the pool. gene pool. That's true. But then you have the ones that Thank do you, make Todd, it. <laughs> for cleaning what was necessary. <laughs> Thank you, Tide, for really cleaning up humanity. I mean, Damn, guess, it all makes sense now. Well, for the next few Why months. Why did you use those colors? Because they did. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Um, deal with shut it. Shut up. Oh, my God. Mm. You know what it is. Yeah, it's like a I mean, Only because we've been talking. <laughs> yeah. Kind of sushi roll. It looks yeah, like a weird kind. donut. <laughs> no shit, Dave Locke. I don't think anybody actually knows what that is. But, you know, I still got your back, homie. Thanks, brother. <laughs> What Justin, were you saying? Justin drew a shitty Tide Pod. Yeah, um, shitty Tide Pod. I was saying that you have the people who do the Tide Pod challenge, and challenge is really just eat a fucking Tide Pod. Um, and it's really just thrilling. people that like were trolling yeah. dumbasses started it, and like weren't probably even actually eating Tide, pod, tide Pods. No, it was just, all like, just a gag. Like, oh, the next cool thing is eating Tide Pods. And yeah. and it became and it actually the gullible and the dumb like literally and figuratively fed off of this. Yeah. <laughs> and and like people started to actually get sick and and now people are doing it because they think like it's cool. They think it's cool, yeah. Because like like stupidity uh I don't get it. I'm a part of know. something. Yeah. yeah. As far as I know, I don't know anybody who's done that. I don't know Which makes who's me done that. very happy for my friends. Yep. Um, so we got to do it first. <laughs> <laughs> you go right ahead. Trendsetters. You apparently don't want to do the hot sauce challenge. But you'll eat a Tide Pod. What hot sauce challenge? We talked about this a couple weeks ago. Like, Did Jeremy, you, it, Jeremy yeah. Adams is going to bring in a whole bunch several of hot, hot sauces, sauces and, peppers and we're going to try them out. And, and you're all like, I don't like hot things. That's not what I said. You no, said I something about you. not wanting to destroy your asshole or something before. Yeah, that work. makes sense. I like <laughs> spicy food, but I also like an unburnt anus. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like you know battling the two loves. Right. So you're gonna do it or you're not? Because I do love it? hot I'd stuff, you, but you I could, love an unburnt anus. You could of do mine. one of them, not all of them. <laughs> Decisions, and then decisions. and then Jason tried and to I'll pass tell it you which as, one's not the. As, uh, I went through the worst. gas chamber, so I don't need to do this. I did actually go through the gas. Station. Yes, you said that previously. <laughs> yeah, so I don't really need to do previously that. Previously on Talkie Box. I mean, but I'll eat whatever. Yeah. I, mean, I, just, I don't eat. want to. But as long as, all right, you know, I'll tell you what. If we do it on a different day than Tuesday, mm -hmm. I'll do it. That's fine. Because Wednesdays are busy days for me. Yeah. And I don't really have time to be like... Shitting my brains <laughs> out all morning. Well, what was going in excruciating pain? Yeah. The what was going to happen was I. It's gonna be hot sauces and then whatever like, uh, we want to put it on or dip it in. It's okay. not gonna be like a full course. You know, like I got you six wings here tossed in the worst thing I could find. Yeah, yeah. we're not like taking shots of hot sauce. No, we're just tasting. No. Yeah, the it's hot just sauce. it's just like a taste. Like see which one you know how badly you react to it. Yeah. Because like. The one I had just got, which I'm very, very happy with, I've seen people just dip toothpicks in it and then go from, like, perfectly fine to full-on, they're sweating, face is red, they're, like, having trouble breathing, just like... <gasps> oh, yeah. Like, Those are fun. At, yeah. um, at work, we had rice one day. It was already kind of spicy rice. And so one of my managers was like, hey, I brought it in for one of my coworkers to try, and he... um. He didn't actually try it that day, which was upsetting. Yeah. But they added it to this rice. So they had a bowl of it. So all I'm seeing is my manager, he just tries it. Yeah, okay. Where's my drink? I need a drink. <laughs> we need something that says talk. Had another box, though. Had another waitress. She just I didn't see this. All I heard was Move! I need a drink <laughs> as she sprints from the kitchen. <laughs> Ooh. And it was good stuff. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. I will say this, there was one time that I did something unintentionally spicy, mm. and I regretted it quite a bit. 
See, we use this um, this super super hot scorpion pepper powder mm, yeah. at work to make some of our our different sauces, and we we take this stuff and it's like we'll take a gallon of this sauce mm -hmm. and we put like a teaspoon and a half of this stuff into a gallon, and the sauce is just insanely hot. Right, like it's nice on the front side, but then it just starts really burning you on the back side. I don't know. Well, I have a beard, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, beards are good about preventing particles yeah. from getting to your like your mouth and your nose. But they preserve. They preserve Wait particles as well. <laughs> Very astute, Dave. <laughs> they do that. I also have a beard. <laughs> so I pick up this can. Well, we had just gotten this thing. So I pick up this jar and I pop it open. Mm -hmm. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it smells pretty hot. And I slap it closed. But when I slapped it closed, <laughs> I didn't realize it at the time. But mm -hmm. Just, just yeah. a little bit of it. Just, just a little bit. I missed. So, I wash my hands. You know, getting back to business. Like I stroked my beard at one point, <laughs> and then I get back to business. And the next thing I know, like my lips hurt. <laughs> like my lips, like really hurt. Like, yeah. What is that? Like, <laughs> what is that? And then I like, I'm like figuring out what's going on, and now I realize that I've been running my hand through my beard, <laughs> mm -hmm. and like my cheek starts to get really warm too because I touched my face. Yeah. And then the next thing I know, my whole face is like on fire. <laughs> like, there's no spice inside my mouth. It's yeah. just all here. <laughs> so there's no like guzzling water to relieve myself. Right. And I'm at work. Yeah, when it's like on the three outside, hours pepper spray. Yeah, like <laughs> three hours into a ten hour shift, yeah. I can't really go and like full scale like scrub out my beard because yeah. it'll be all drippy and really gross. Mm -hmm. So I had to suffer through it, <laughs> just like, ow. See, I think what you should have done, like you probably have milk, right? Yeah. So you go, you you put your head over a sink, uh -huh. you dump milk on your face. Okay. Right? Do it like flash dance. Though. Yeah. Like yeah. flash dance, except on a sink. Uh, with milk. With milk. With milk. Yeah, yeah do it in slow motion. Mm, like a Wisconsin flash dance. <laughs> like a Wisconsin flash dance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speaking of pepper spray, I remember once when I was a child, um, you know, like you're a kid, you want to like you explore things. Right? Yes, of course. You go through like drawers and stuff, like, oh, what's in here? So I went through my mom's purse one time. Ooh. And I found her pepper spray. Ooh. And I was like, oh, cool. I know what this is. I'm, you know, I was old enough to be like, I know what this is. I don't want to spray this in my face. Don't do it. And so I, you know, it had like this turny thing. You turn it so it's mm -hmm. in the position where you can spray <laughs> Safety. it. Safety. And I sprayed it away from me. And then the wind brought it back. <laughs> <laughs> And I learned there's never a good time to use pepper spray. There isn't. Like, it's it's apparently, never, I've, if I've you're not never, being attacked, don't bother. I've never had the misfortune of dealing with pepper spray, mm -hmm. but I've heard nothing but horror stories. I have had the misfortune of being tased before. Have you? Yes. Wait, no, I've heard this. Story. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was yeah. tased also. <laughs> we were tased. <laughs> a very good friend of ours, Katie, uh, got a taser. Yeah. For safety. Right. Uh, but you see, the thing about a taser is, is it's a new toy, so you, you want to play wanna with use, it. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not really getting mugged on the reg. <laughs> so you you're ask your friends. <laughs> you ask your friends yeah. if you can taste them, <laughs> and believe it or not, a majority of the time the answer is no. <laughs> I do not want to be tased. <laughs> there, we had a few friends. Who seemed pretty enthusiastic about it, believe it or not, but like, oh yeah, tase me, come on, I want to feel what that's like. <laughs> and then we saw that happen, we're like, yeah, definitely no now. Uh, but somehow... I was on the fence before, <laughs> now I'm positive, no tasing. <laughs> Over time, through the course of this evening, <laughs> our inhibitions were... Stripped? Yeah, I don't know, they were just kind of weaned a yeah. little bit. Diminished? Yeah. Yeah. Diminished inhibitions. Great mm. word. I mm. like it. Diminished. So Jason was first. <laughs> he got tased. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> you agreed to it or you just like let it happen? I I basically 
told everybody that they were dumb until I became like the minority <laughs> uh, in the household of people who had been tased and people who hadn't been tased. <laughs> and then it became like, oh, you don't have the fortitude. Or you don't have the balls wherewithal. Yeah. You don't have the chutzpah. <laughs> And so I was like, all right, if you're just going to keep on calling me out, fucking yeah. tase me, bro. <laughs> and so, so they tased me. Where'd they get you? And it really wasn't that bad. On the arm. Okay. And I had, I had like four hoodies on, three or four hoodies yeah, on at the like time. You, like you do. Like I normally do. Yeah. And I really barely even felt it. Like, so the trick to getting tased is wear layers. Wear layers. Yeah. See, I, I was also one of the remaining minority after Jason had gotten tased. Mm. I was still pretty you know, adamant about not getting tased. <laughs> and then my friend Katie saw this opening in the conversation mm. where while she was working on convincing me to get tased, and I'm like, nah, nah. And then we just, she kept making points after points after points, and then I'm like, you know what? I'd be willing to do it if you were willing to get tased in return. <laughs> And she said no. <laughs> <laughs> so we kept uh, bargaining, yeah. negotiating what it would take for me to get tased. Um, and I just got tased. <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> yeah, like, mm, but it, like, just oh. right there on the side really quick. Like in the... Yeah, in, in, in this little region. the negotiations oh. broke down. The negotiations broke down and it yeah. was just decided executively yeah. by the taser owner. Unilaterally. That I would be tased. Yeah. Now, how, how, how was it? It was unpleasant. <laughs> it was very quick. Now, it's not like a get down on the ground, you motherfucker, yeah. get down on the ground. Yeah. Kind of yeah. It was like, uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> That's bad. And, okay. uh, yeah, it, it was not pleasant. I can see how it would have been increasingly less pleasant the longer I had been tased. Right. So I'm thankful it was brief. Now, was this, this was through clothes or a t-shirt? J- no, no, that's yeah, it. I wasn't. I you weren't layered you see, up like Jason. Jason always has yeah. like yeah. I don't know if you can see this in the camera. He's a his, bulky. Yeah, his arm is only this wide, and he's yeah. all jacked. I'm actually two dimensional. I wear <laughs> this, I wear all these layers just for the camera, just so that we can see. To yeah. give me a, that yeah. third yeah. perception Ooh. of like depth. <laughs> um, yeah, I was a t-shirt wearer. Yeah. So. But but got me pretty good. All right. Have you ever been tased, Dave? I haven't. Do you want to? I don't. I didn't think so. Yeah. What I think is that they've. I see a lot of these Pansy. like <laughs> internet challenges, you know, ice bucket challenge yeah, yeah. and all, you know, hot sauce challenge and things I like that. Challenge. I think Talkie Box <laughs> should go ahead and unite door challenge. these challenges into like some kind of a singular sort of gauntlet challenge. Where you have to like eat a Tide Pod, get tased, have some hot sauce, well, all, all while ex- planking. All of it <laughs> except the the Tide part. Oh, yeah, that's uh, where you draw the line. Take a shot yeah, of hot sauce gotcha. while being tased. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or while you know being dunked with a bucket of ice water. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here's the best. Thing oh, that's really spicy. Ah, spoosh. <laughs> so so here's what you do. All right, you do the you take a, a shot of hot sauce, uh-huh. and then you plank. For one of those, what what do they call those videos? The mannequin challenge. Oh, okay. Then you do yeah. like a mannequin challenge while you're planking, mm-hmm. and then you dump a bucket of ice water. Now on you get and tased get while tased. you're planking, and you can't break the mannequin. Okay, and then you get a <laughs> bucket of ice water dumped on you. Jason first, not it. <laughs> I mean, I'll do it. Yeah, I figured you would. <laughs> I'll do it. You're a brave soul. Yeah. Oh. You've got the fortitude. I mean, not for you guys. The wherewithal. <laughs> I'll do it for them. Well, now I have to make this happen. I need Katie. (laughs) I need need the hottest hot sauce you got. Hot sauce. Why's it going to be the hottest hot sauce? Because that makes it fun. (laughs) I mean, there's plenty of hot sauces that are slightly lesser hot sauces. It won't be a full shot. It'll be... Like, I don't want to lose we my do- sense of taste. <laughs> yeah, we don't want you shitting your pants yeah. while you're planking either. <laughs> like, you can't even put that on YouTube. It won't be a full shot. That'd be most of the bottle. Right? Yeah, that's true. It's, it's very like, hot. It's like it's $13 expensive. a bottle. Yeah. yeah, I just want like maybe like 20 cents worth. I'll get you a tablespoon of the s- dried scorpion powder for you to just like... Take a bite of the like scorpion cinnamon challenge, powder. It yeah, like a, <laughs> like with scorpion powder, and then take a shot of hot sauce. Now straight up, I just do that. I bet you would, and you <laughs> would not be happy with yourself. 
Well, I mean, you don't know my spice tolerance. <laughs> That's true. I don't. But have you ever tried to do? Have you ever, of taste? Have you ever tried to do that with cinnamon? I don't like cinnamon. Yeah, cinnamon. I just don't like cinnamon at all. A spoonful of any kind of like powdered, strong powder like that yeah. will hit you real hard once you actually the saliva starts to soak yeah, into. Apparently, it. apparently the, the spoonful of cinnamon is tantamount to a spoonful of sand. Like yeah. you just it, you can't. You can't. Yeah, it's so dry, but also cinnamon has like an innate, like heat to it. It's yeah. not like it's not the same as peppers, but it's still like there's a spice to it. There's right. an unpleasant sensation it's with too much cinnamon. Yeah, why I don't like cinnamon gum. Mm. I don't like cinnamon gum because of Goldschlager. Yeah, but. I don't like Goldschlager. <laughs> <laughs> or so it's really the cinnamon flavor. Well, it's the for me. Have you ever had Goldschlager? Mm -hmm. you know, it tastes like big red, big red gum. Yep, and that's terrible. And there was a New Year's where sponsored by Big Red. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was with some friends and we were drinking Goldschlager. We were doing shots of Goldschlager and having a great time. If you if you've never seen Goldschlager, it's got actual flecks of gold in it. Mm -hmm. And there are people they're not who, actual flecks. Of gold. They are they're actual no, flecks of gold. I'm not making this shit up because there are people who like will strain it and get that gold and go and sell it for the pennies that it's worth at such small size, but. Um, mm, it seems so gold. wasteful to put fucking gold yeah. in a drink. I don't think it's this gold. terrible. What do you think it is? I think it's some kind of it's something like painted else. No, it's no, it's it's gold leaf. They they use gold leaf. Yeah. But, but anyway, minuscule. There amounts. we are doing shots of gold slugger for New Year's, having a great old time, and eating eating this broccoli cheese dip, and it was fantastic. Mm. And then mm -mm -mm. Uh, one of my buddies goes, "Hey, let's switch over to Jack Daniels," and then we did that, and that was stupid. And um, and then I, I think we ran out, so we went back to Goldschlager. And then there are large parts of the night I don't remember. <laughs> um, I do know that everybody in the house threw up at one point. Good. Including myself. Good. I woke up in the shower at one point. I did not put myself there. Um, like, were you <laughs> laying down in the shower? No, I was standing like... naked in the shower. <laughs> oh, what the hell? <laughs> and, and, and I remember coming to consciousness and being like, this is nice. This is a pleasant feeling. This warm shower. I like being in the shower. This is where I live now. <laughs> and uh, my buddy DJ, who was apparently the one who put me there, was like, time to get out of the shower. I'm like, no, this is my element. I want to be here. I just got Fuck here. Yourself. <laughs> and he's like, nope, get out. And he like bodily takes me out of the shower. <laughs> and then I don't remember some things. And then I woke up wearing clothes that did not belong to me. <laughs> in a room I hadn't seen yet. Nice. And, uh... Was it a big old button-up T-shirt? Did it like cut off right at the top? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a T-shirt and shorts. Did, did, yeah, was just, yeah, little yeah. little little booty shorts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did did you walk around like asking if he was gonna give you a ride home? <laughs> sure. Want me to make you some breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was Whoop. not a pleasant time. But ever since then, because of the gold slugger, and I've had this kind of experience with a lot of alcohol that I've had bad experiences with, is I can't stand that taste or smell anymore i'm sorry i just i can't get the image out of my head right of you walking around in a button-up t-shirt <laughs> just like walking around some guy's house like with a frying pan i made eggs <laughs> i was far too long for that. yeah um that, no i mean i do the same thing like jägermeister negative yeah. nostalgia that like yeah yeah when you just remember like to how this, awful something was yeah, to some this people day, like that with smells yeah i can't drink beer for the most part because my first big party of college i got real messed up on beer and hunch punch and now just the, the smell of beer kind of puts me off and and i it's not as bad as it used to be i used to actually get nauseous from just smelling beer and uh, it's better now, and I've, tr I've found a couple beers that I will drink, but for the most part, I, just, I can't do it. Yeah. Jägermeister is one I definitely can't do. Mm. Like, I threw in the towel on that years ago. Yeah. Once you throw up Jägermeister, you never need to drink it again. True. You ever had, uh, you ever had absinthe? I have not had absinthe. Here's my suggestion when it comes to absinthe. This is for you and you guys here. Uh, absinthe is meant to be drank in a certain way. Yes. With the sugar and Poured over whatever, the sugar know, cube and etc. Do not, under any circumstances, let anyone tell you that you should do it straight. Because it tastes like pure fucking evil. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. If evil has a taste, it's absinthe. And I, there was, it was I, I think it was the I first I mean, it, is, it is colored Disney evil green. It is. 
the first birthday that I lived with, like, that I had when I was living with Jason, our our roommate at the time brought it to me for for my birthday. He's like, "Here, I got you the shot for your birthday," and I was already drunk. It sobered me up. That's how bad it is. See, it's actually really funny. Like absinthe. I'm not sure if you know this was actually illegal in the United States up until a couple of years ago. True absinthe, yeah, well, yeah. True absinthe was illegal. Like you could not get in the United States because of its hallucinogenic properties, hmm. and it actually does have hallucinogenic properties because of the wormwood that yeah. they put in there. You're technically poison. It's <laughs> technically poison. <laughs> but yeah, I've heard that the only way you can drink it is to like do the the proper like ritual and yeah. pour the absinthe over the sugar. There's, the sugar, there's like a mixing with water and yeah. stuff like that. And yeah, don't do it straight. It's just it's just like did you I was sober for a good half hour, and like my drunk went away, and I drank that. It was awful, and then like thirty minutes later, I went back to being drunk from the previous. Did you get a visit from the green fairy? No. No, there was no hallucination. It was just me hating everyone. Okay. Yeah. Well, you should try and drink enough to hallucinate sometimes. I don't want to do that. Why? Because it was awful. Yeah, because you drank it straight, you dummy. Well, <laughs> I think that process is actually part of the activation process of like making the hallucinogenic properties more oh, yeah. functional. So if you're just drinking it straight, I think that the odds of you getting any noticeable visual or auditorial hallucinations are very, very small. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I would be interested in finding out. Write that down. You know, how about you write that down? Where am I? We can do that on Talkie Box. We absinthe could, uh, challenge. <laughs> shot of absinthe. I'm abstaining. No, I've already completed it. this challenge. Nope, you're doing when it. I was, when I was a younger lad, I, uh, I had a, a, young boy. a different group of friends. Well, actually, uh, the owner of the castle was amongst those group of friends. Yeah. But uh, I, um, we had a New Year's Eve party. And I drank a fifth of Avalanche and a fifth of Aftershock. And Aftershock, Avalanche I remember. is a peppermint oh. schnapps and Aftershock cinnamon. is a cinnamon mm -hmm. schnapps. That's and that's it's one's got, got these big sugar crystals yeah. in the bottom that just soak in that alcohol. Mm -hmm. And there's tons of alcohol concentration in those sugar crystals. I was actually so drunk that I like screwdrivered <laughs> into the bottles yeah. to get those flavored crystals get them out. out of there yeah. and then like use them as though they were like ice cubes and other drinks <laughs> um so i got alcohol poisoning that night uh, yeah. as you would yeah and i found out that instead of like taking me to the hospital <laughs> that what my friends would do is just roll me off the deck <laughs> after looting all of my cigarettes <laughs> and my lighter and like pretty much anything of party value right. that I had on me <laughs> and then just sort of <laughs> pushing me into a place. Now, as I mentioned beforehand, this was a New Year's Eve party. Mm. And so I woke up uh, at dawn <laughs> with like a layer of frost on my clothing. It uh, it didn't fortunately frost to my still beating <laughs> body. I was alive at the point. Still you know. missing a piece of your nose to this day, though. Boop. Um, and so I crawled from the area uh, where I had been rolled off. Uh, and I found an open car, <laughs> like, like just crawled through the driveway, like throwing up every few feet <laughs> and I just found an open car yeah. and I got inside of it and I passed back out <laughs> where yeah. I got woke up probably four or five hours later by the owner of that car mm -hmm. who was like, Hey man, you got to get out of my car. <laughs> I'm leaving. Uh, uh. Aftershock. I remember. Uh, so I don't drink that shit no more. Yeah, I, I had friends who would they would drink me aftershock, and then you used a screwdriver apparently kept the bottle intact. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, my friends would smash that on the ground. Oh, and then they'd eat glass. And then try to pick through the glass to get to the sugar crystals because they were dummies. <laughs> mm -mm. That's not sugar. <laughs> that, it tastes that, okay though. That's not sugar. <laughs> nope. That's, it tastes like blood. <laughs> <laughs> Very iron rich. Yeah. 
I like this new flavor. <laughs> so mm, tastes like I'm licking a battery. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that uh, that, that's about the end of the show. Yeah, Dave. Yeah. Did you learn anything? Fuck no. What is it talking about? <laughs> no, I learned that uh, <laughs> that flamethrower is apparently the world's safest. World's safest flamethrower. World's safest flame flamethrower from the boring company. Yeah. And guys? I want one. I want one. What did you learn? I'm just curious, like, what would be the like the world's safest like ninja sword? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, what would be like it would still have to be a ninja sword, yeah, right? right? And you would still have to be able to like cut a man in half or whatever. Right. But like, right. would it just be like the minimum length I, to I, be like? I a, imagine it would be like if you let go of it. Like something like sheathed the blade or something. Oh, like an automatically sheathing blade. Okay. So you couldn't accidentally... Like you could purposefully hurt people, but you couldn't accidentally hurt somebody. See, now, if this flamethrower has like a camera on the front of it with like human being recognition (laughs) software... Like, nah, bro! And it doesn't work when you point it at a human being, (laughs) I'll be fucking impressed. (laughs) Just. But otherwise, I'm under the impression this is just like every other flame, though, where only the flame is probably that long. Nine feet. Rather than like Nine and a half. that Nine long. Feet. Now, see, what you what you need to do yeah. is you need to get in contact with both the Boring Company mm-hmm. and Brian mm-hmm. and Redbubble, and let's get some Talkie Box branded flamethrowers on the website. That's not a bad idea. It would go per. It's a white flamethrower. You just slap a talkie box sticker over mm-hmm. the boring company. It yeah. still looks great. Get that talkie box blue on it. Yeah. yeah. Why does it have to be white? It's 2018. Racist. I failed you. <laughs> Jason, what'd you learn tonight? Um. Well, besides that, Justin is a racist flamethrower oh. guy. Um, <laughs> you knew most that of that. That sounded like hate speech. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I learned. Spit out those racist flames. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that Mario Odyssey is a uh, is a nine out of ten on the Justin scale of outstanding Nintendo games. Yeah. And uh, that he thinks the Switch is an incredible buy, and he's very glad. All right, Justin, what'd you learn? I learned that uh, Jason has an iPhone. And doesn't know how to use it. <laughs> and I also learned that um, you can also get a Boring Company fire extinguisher to pair with your flamethrower. 30 bucks. I'm excited about that. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say they accessorized the fire extinguisher, or the, 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 the flamethrower. Yeah. They didn't even accessorize the hat. Well, you could probably get a Boring Company fish hook or something if you're down in the south. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> or like a, a belt buckle. Can you get like a Boring Company belt buckle? I think that would accessorize a hat appropriately. A belt mm. buckle on the hat? Mm-hmm. We should do a talkie box like belt hats. buckle. I guess. A talkie box belt. I really like the idea of the talkie bot as a head as a, yeah. as a belt buckle. I'd wear the shit out of that. I'll see what I can do about that. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it's... Flamethrowers, belt buckles. Talk to the Boring Company. Get in on... Elon, hashtag, let's uh, lunch. Let's lunch. <laughs> let's uh, lunch. <laughs> uh, lunch. Let's no, lunch. seriously, all you had to do is probably tweet him. He'll probably look at it. Yeah. I mean. What'd you learn? Flamethrowers are fun. You didn't know that already? You learned no, that I on mean, the show? No. I just. It's, it's no like, longer an opinion, it's ladies and gentlemen. solidified it. Yeah. Flamethrowers are fun is no longer an opinion. Like, it's it very is now nice. factual American information. It's Correct. Very nice being around people who share my opinion with right. how excited I get about this flamethrower <laughs> rather than like, uh, like, yeah, look at this. Dude, it's a flamethrower. Like, well, I don't need your negativity in my life. It's an affordable I mean, flamethrower. Negative. You know, the first thing I would want to do is go to South Carolina mm-hmm. or Florida or Tennessee, wherever the hell they sell fireworks, get a big ass paper bag mm-hmm. filled with random fireworks oh. and then flamethrower that paper bag. That's not bag. where I thought you were going with this. I thought you were talking Though, about just walking in to the fireworks store with flamethrower. Hey guys, you have to admit, this out. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. I mean, it, That would be a pretty good flamethrower video. That would be, yeah. Much better than the one that would be considered uh, evidence <laughs> number one <laughs> in the case versus Exhibit the, A. The people versus Jason Martin. Flamethrower. <laughs> the state, Exhibit B, this video of him using the The state of Alabama versus Jason Martin. <laughs> We'd like to uh, introduce Exhibit A. 
so now this we need... flamethrower with a talkie box sticker. <laughs> on <top of> it. <laughs> so Mr. Martin, can you tell me your association <laughs> with talkie box? <laughs> They're a militia group. They're an active <laughs> anti-American militia group. Well, I'm hearing is we need the five hundred dollars worth of worth of flame The cult leader's name is Dave. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's it. the host. <laughs> the host with the most. Uh, we need five hundred dollars worth of fireworks and five hundred dollars worth of flamethrower. I'll we'll make a video of that. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. As soon as you guys raise five hundred dollars worth of flamethrowers. And you guys raise <laughs> and the five hundred dollars of the, the fireworks. Part of you guys, we're gonna roll out this video. Yeah. Get yourselves together and then split in two. I'll put I'll put ten dollars into this. I got five on it. So that's fifteen bucks. No, nothing. <laughs> no. All right, guys. No. All right, that's my uh, idea. <laughs> listen, guys, only nine hundred and eighty-five dollars left to go. Yeah. Let's get to work. We got hashtags tonight. Uh, we have uh, a few hashtags. Okay. Uh, some of them are going to be a little more ex obscure. Uh, the first one, uh, Themecular Thymitis. Hashtag Themecular Thymitis. That's what Jason has. It prevents him from using an iPhone. Right. Uh, hashtag Jason has an iPhone. <laughs> hashtag knockoff flamethrower. Mm -hmm. And hashtag absinthe challenge. All right. Yes. Well, get those trending on uh, the Twitters and whatever. Yeah, feel free to set and yourselves on it? fire this spring. Yeah, coming this spring, YouTube videos of your children dying. <laughs> That's exactly what's gonna happen. <laughs> Use all your machine players and your and your eye computers and uh, and, and and make all that stuff mm -hmm. do things on the on the inter on the intermedias. Yeah, spread our names and our faces and our total value, <laughs> weigh and measure us. And then and increase and then, our value, and then do that like Caesar thing with your thumb, yeah. where you're like, well, well, hot or not, actually, yeah. hot or not. Yeah. And remember, if you do anything flamethrower challenge related, make sure you mention Talkie Box told you to do it. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag very true. Unless it's a crime. Hashtag this is for Talkie Box. <laughs> yeah. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, good night everybody. everybody.